So my name is Stina Simonsson and I'm from Sweden. So I'm doing induced pluripotent stem cell, iPS cells, and we do disease modeling and we're focusing on, uh, at the moment we're focusing on cartilage regeneration. I'm interested in, in fundamental biological questions, but I can do it so that you can combine that with, with a disease mechanism or it's good for, beneficial for human health. Uh, we don't know, I mean, we, we started, I started that because my, my background is that I used to, to work with um, cloning and re regenerate new individuals in Cambridge in, in uh, England uh, with Professor John Garden who got the Nobel Prize and then that's why I'm into the IPS field uh, and then I think the advantage of using IPS cells we didn't know that from the beginning but it looks like it has a very good regeneration capacity and can heal the cartilage well there is a lot of challenges <laughs> the most um, hardest thing is to repeat others uh, so to get a perfect protocol that is working and the protocols that we have been limited to is to co-culture with other cells and so but then it's very hard to 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 get the mechanism of what's causing it because it's it's very, very hard to get rid of the other substances and thing but it, the challenge is always you know if you're doing the right thing and that, and that it's going to get a good result that you can trust a reliable result yeah, so we use 3d bioprinting because we think that 3D bioprinting will uh, help us in, uh, in making a very precise structure. So we, we, we think that you know, the 3D printing can, can make a lot um, of precise structures in a, in a very short time and we can also put in precise um, concentrations of different factors that we know is important for, for making the cartilage. Uh, because we are making them from IPS cells that we have to, to take through development to, to in order to and then during development it's very important with concentrations of factors like morphogenes and stuff so we need that is what we try to do and achieve uh, so we we printing we tried <laughs> different things but nowadays we print with the cells within the scaffolds together uh, but we're also trying to place cells in, uh, or place whole organoids into the printing process but it's uh, yes so, so I think printing with the cells uh, if you compare that to seeding the cells uh, um, if you want to have it in a clinical settings it must be a huge advantage if you can print the cells and if they can survive so, so what we have seen when we print the cells we need to have a lot of cells that survive to actually form some kind of tissue that is, is a, a main um, findings for us actually that we need a lot of cells to survive uh, to form the tissue so where we have less cells we don't get the tissue but we still have a lot of cells so it's it's you know so, so that is is one of our challenges at the moment to make the printing process so, so the most cells survive I, th I think this research can can find its way to the clinic absolutely definitely I think so it's a, it's, it's a long way there and we're not doing any clinical <laughs> research at the moment and we don't you know it's yeah, it has to be safe and with the cells, but I think, I think absolutely. And, and then you can maybe print even at the surgery table directly into to the wound. Uh, so we hope that our research within the next year would, would um, get all the answers <laughs> to, to is particularly osteoarthritis field that we, we try that we have a model system and we can print with that and see, see if, if we can get some molecular answers so that we can use and screen for, for drugs for instance and so, so we hope that the 3D printing would, will help us in the screening process.